Good morning and welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for October 25th. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two is never forget rule number one. Warren Buffett, a lot of wisdom in there. You know, Buffett also said that uh, you should be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy, which we'll talk a little bit more about that. And do notice on today's report, uh, which is in the attachment, that the fear greed index is now one of the most uh, extreme fear readings we've seen in a long time at a reading of six. Now, how did this correction get started? Why did it get started? When did it get started? Well, there's a lot of clues. There were clues. Now, why is it happening? We really don't know yet. Uh, it could be something we're not even thinking of, but the market is a future looking uh, index. The market is just looking to the future. And so it sees something out there that we may not see. Now, the first clue that we saw, and I wanted to point this graph out to you. Now, this is the NASDAQ. Now, what we're looking at here is a 50-day moving average and a 25-day moving average. So really, the first clue, now down here at the bottom, you'll notice, this is volume. This is how many shares are traded on a daily basis on the NASDAQ. Now, realize the market is pretty much controlled by the institutional investor. They're the ones that are running the trillions of dollars out there that pretty much run the show. So when you see something called institutional selling, the sellers are in control of the market. So you don't want to try to fight that. As you can see here, just with the price action of the NASDAQ, it broke to a new low yesterday. And it just the chart pattern is not good. We've got a you know got a sell signal on this particular index, but the first clue was on October or excuse me September 23rd, which was a Friday. We got volume of over 3.5 billion shares on the sell side. So then you look for okay, what's going to happen next? Well, you see a real mixed bag and basically another distribution day which again, you're seeing failed rallies is what's going on here. Another distribution day. These red bars are distribution days. The green bars are accumulation days. And you can really tell that the, the distribution is far outweighing the accumulation. Now, if we look at this on a weekly basis, this is a weekly graph of the NASDAQ. You can see here back on the um, the week that we talked about, which was the 23rd, was the, the that that end of that week. We had an overall good week because the early part of the week was good, but then you start to see week after week after week of distribution. Now the volume yesterday did somewhat dry up a little bit, but you know we still got you know Thursday and Friday, so we you know we could easily get up here. But uh, I am seeing uh, distribution by institutional investors. Now, this particular graph, and I apologize for not being able to fit it onto the screen because it is a large graph. This is the 10-20 uh, moving averages, 10-month versus 20-month. And if you could just kind of use your imagination here a little bit, it has crossed below the upper moving average, but we are not on a sell signal on the long-term 10-20 uh, index. However, if we look at something like the value line geometric, you can clearly see. Now, the value line geometric is an index that is made up of the average stock. I mean, it's a very large index. It's 1,700 stocks. Uh, this is a market. Uh, this is not market cap weighted. This is arithmetic or geometrically weighted, which means equal weighting. And so you can see that the geometric has really come down. And this is the 200-day moving average. We have just blown through that like a knife through butter and making new lows. Uh, the, the trend is not good. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, fear greed index got to a reading of six. However, our put call ratio, again, is also in extreme fear. You know, this is a green light. Uh, one other indicator that we're watching is the amount of money flowing in and out of mutual funds over a five-week period. That has also given a green light. So if there's anything positive going on right now is that we're seeing a lot of excessive pessimism and could set us up for a very nice buying opportunity. Now, the prior leadership was really dominated by companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google, the Fangs. Well, you know, like we talked about last week, you know, Nicholas Darvis mentioned that he felt that 
the market had kind of given up on a certain group of stocks that were really not going to lead in the future. In other words, you have to think about it this way. If the mutual funds and the funds and the big institutional investors run the show, and then they are fully invested in these companies, there's really very little fuel left in the tank to continue to drive these stocks higher. So what we have to realize here is where it gets complicated is this correction could be something bad in the economy, the economy slowing down, China having problems. I mean, it could be a, a multitude of things, interest rates going up, who knows. But what really does seem to happen is is that one group of stocks will lose steam and another group of stocks will take their place. So where it gets complicated is, and this is really the hardest part of my job, is to figure out where the next leadership is going to be. So if we look at Amazon here, the first thing you have to notice is this pattern. High, pullback, double top, with the second top being lower than the, the, the prior top. Then we break down below this base because the stock had a base right here about 1850. Now yesterday the stock dropped all the way down to 1656. I was really hoping that Amazon would hold in this area, but it's not. And so it's telling you that maybe the FANG stocks are, have kind of seen their better days and the bloom is off the rose. So we want to watch these stocks because what we're really wanting to see is a trend start to develop. Let's just say, take this point here. You, you get the big sell-off, then you start making higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows, and you go back into an uptrend. Well, right now, the market is in a downtrend, and it's very difficult to make money in the stock market when the market indexes are in a downtrend. In fact, I'd say it's close to impossible. Anyway, here is Apple. Now, Apple is holding up better than Amazon. It's really holding up well. Now, you have to realize something about Apple. This, is, this company has a pristine balance sheet. I mean, they've got more cash on the books than any other company in the world. And so it's a very solid balance sheet. But that's not to say that the valuation is too high or whatever and the stock can continue to sell off. I think it's important that Apple hold this 215 area. Yesterday it closed at 215.09, actually got down to 214.50. But I would just say it's very important that Apple hold the 215 area and back up to Amazon, I would say that you know breaking below 1700 was not a very good sign. So Apple is holding up better. Now one other stock that I want to mention here, and this has to do with the transportation index. This is FedEx. FedEx broke down dramatically yesterday, made an, uh, another new low uh, for the year, 52 week low. Uh, this is not a good sign because when you start to see the transports, and I'm, I'm talking about the rails, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the airlines, uh, anything to do with moving goods and services around the country or around the world, when those stocks start to deteriorate, it's telling you that probably we're looking at some type of economic slowdown, whether it's now or next year or the year after. But the fact that FedEx is falling off like this tells me that this market could have a broad decline However, we could be, you know, getting close to a bottom. Now, one other graph I wanted to mention here is the Golden Dragon China. You can see that the, this this is the all the Chinese stocks that trade in the United States. Now, China is definitely giving us a warning. This could be where, you know, the problem with the market because if China goes into an extensive slowdown, you know, they are the second largest economy in the world now. They've passed up Japan. So we are potentially, this is the 1020, this is uh, the blue line is the 10-month moving average. The red line is the 20-month moving average. We call this the 1020. If we get a 1020 cross, which looks like we're going to get one, unless there's some type of magical rally here, that'll put China, in, in my opinion, into a major bear market. Now, the other group that I would comment on that is really looking iffy are the banks, the financial sector. This is the XLF, which is the financial sector. Now, this is banks, insurance companies, and so forth. But when you see this kind of fall off in this group, that's just not a real good sign either. So in conclusion, what I'm saying is, and I don't have a top five this week because it just doesn't make any sense to be looking at the top five because everything looks terrible. The market has gotten difficult. Uh, we will have another uptrend. More than likely, it's going to be led by companies we may not have ever even heard of. But the best advice I could give you right now is, 
you know, maintain your cash positions, have a good cash position. I would hold off on any new buying until we start to see some type of defined uptrend within the indexes, and that's just not the case right now. But if you have any questions, give me a call. Thank you very much.